Oh! It is the holiday season. We got Thanksgiving. We got Christmas. We got Hanukkah coming up. I don't celebrate the last one, but it's still there. And what do all of these things have in common? Well, how the f should I know? Big holiday meals with families, right? And it's always the same. It's always so boring. Turkey. Mm. Ham. Mm. Mashed potatoes. Mm. So we devised a challenge today. We got some of the most cursed meal items ever, and we are trying to construct the most vile, most apprehensive, most disgusting meal for your holiday seasons. And we're doing it in a tournament bracket format because it's kind of fun. So to explain some of these, game one, we have a king hand versus virgin boy eggs. We had to look up what a lot of this shit was, so let me explain what virgin boy eggs are. The key to these eggs is the urine of young boys under 10. Young boys' urine is collected in schools and markets around the city in buckets placed by their street vendors. Eggs are boiled until the urine... <laughs> Eggs are boiled in the urine until hard. The eggs are then cracked and continue to boil for several hours to let the urine soak into the egg. The golden egg smells strongly of urine, but the taste has been described as delicate, salty, and addictive. So it's little Asian boy piss inside of an egg. That's so disgusting. I literally thought that was a jalapeno with cheese inside of it. That is fucked. Uh, let me see what the king hand is. So the king hand is from a popular Twitter post. Someone said, I had a dream where there was a food called king hand, a hollow handmade of M&M cookies filled with Greek salad. I could not stop thinking about it. Here's the accumulation of work and effort. That is fucking disgusting also. And like I said, the objective here isn't to be like, which one would you eat? It's about which one would you not eat? We're uh, The objective is to make the most fucked holiday season dinner that maybe you can replicate at home. Oh man. You know, I mean like at the end of the day, the king hand is part cookie. The virgin boy egg is just piss egg. It's I, I think that it, it's very clearly going to have to go to virgin virgin boy eggs. I also hate the fucking name virgin boy eggs, dude. But I will say the king hand, that is just a cursed fucking combination of like cold salad with cookie. It's just, I think it's supposed to be a play on like sweet and savory. That is just absolutely terrible. But I think all in all, I would eat the king hand over virgin boy eggs. So I have to give it to virgin boy eggs. All right, next one, a ballot. Oh my God, what the fuck is that? And then chicken feet meatballs. Oh my God, these both look fucking terrible. Let's look into what a ballot is. Which a ballot, it's from the Philippines. The mallard ducks are incubated for two to three weeks, boiled inside and then served from the shell. The warm, gooey, gamey liquid is referred to as the soup of the duck. How do you eat it? The amniotic fluid is drunk straight from the shell and the yolk as well as the duck embryo and then eaten straight from the shell, the bones and the beak still being soft enough to be eaten. Here's a fun fact, a common street food in the Philippines, it is considered a known aphrodisiac and hangover cure. Interesting, that sounds terrible. It is, it's essentially boiled duck. I mean, look at that. Oh my God, so that is a duck. I was kind of like looking, I thought it was like bugs at first. So the, the beak and everything is so soft that you just drink it straight. It's a little shot glass. It's an egg shot glass with boiled duck. Hmm. I'm gonna go on a limb and just kind of say I know what chicken feet meatballs are, which is, uh, it just looks like, uh, I mean, just chicken feet and meat. Is that all it is? Chicken feet and meatballs, which is also pretty fucking disgusting. Hmm. The hangover cure part makes it seem very interesting of, I honestly wonder if the ballot is as bad. Cause also you take it down. I mean, the chicken feet meatballs is gonna be crunchy. Also look at the fucking meat. What, what is, that, is that meat around them? What kind of meat is that? Those look like Brazilian nuts. So those aren't Brazilian nuts. Those are, that's, that's ground beef. Oh my God, this is hard. I really don't want to do a shot of a basically fully formed duck embryo. But at the same time, the crunch, like I'm thinking about sitting there with the chicken feet meatball chewing into that. Oh God. Oddly enough, the chicken feet meatball is kind of skewing to become the winner right now. I mean, I'm zooming in on this now. Jesus fuck. That is honestly so rancid. It looks like a testicle where it's just like a baby crawling out of a testicle. That is f 
Oh my god, that is horrible. The zoom in on the ballot doesn't seem much better either, but at least at the same time it feels, I mean, I'm just thinking in terms of texture. I think it'd be smoother. I, the chicken feet meatballs has got to be the winner. That is disgusting. That, that picture is, is fucked. That is horrible. Today's video is sponsored by PDS Debt. Debt is never fun to talk about. Even when you're doing the right things, it seems like debt can come out and grab you at any moment's notice. But luckily, PDS Debt is here to help. You know, I went to art school and it wasn't cheap. It was one of the dumbest financial decisions I ever did. And after I graduated, immediately they started racking up the bills and we had a little bit of grace period. But after a while, the stress is built up and I just really wish there was an easier solution to it all. Which PDS Debt has a customized options for anyone struggling with debt. They can help with debt for credit cards, personal loans, collections, or medical bills. Plus, PDS debt is interest-free. Anyone with $10,000 or more in eligible debt qualifies. There is no minimum credit score required, which means they can help people with bad or fair credit, save thousands in interest and fees, pay off your debt in a fraction of the time. Also, PDS debt rolls all of your payments into one low monthly payment to keep you on track. If you're struggling with debt, choose PDS debt to help you out. Right now, PDS debt is offering a free debt analysis. It only takes 30 seconds. Head over to pdsdebt.com slash pop meat to get your free debt assessment today. Thank you to PDS Debt for sponsoring this video and back to the video. All right, Rocky Mountain Oysters versus Mountain Dew Deviled Eggs, which Rocky Mountain Oysters, those are just balls. I think they're bull balls. I'm pretty sure a lot of people like them. I think I've had them once, actually. It was okay. Mountain Dew Deviled Eggs? Honestly, it doesn't sound that bad either. Mountain Dew Deviled Eggs. They kind of are pretty too, aren't they? That's the thing with Rocky Mountain Oysters too, is they can be deep fried. I mean, which one would be less appealing on a plate? I think it would be the Mountain Dew Deviled Eggs. If you deep fry a Rocky Mountain, you will not know that it's a testicle. So I think it, you gotta go with the Mountain Dew Eggs, just in terms of the chaos of of your plate because now we also have to think about a big part of this too is thinking about the aesthetic of your plate right something to think about there but i think the the deviled eggs has got to take it, it, it takes the cake on this one for sure and everybody else is like oh my god it's a ball it's a testicle dude don't knock it before you try it bitch here we go boom nacho cheerios or Kasu marzu. Kasu marzu, for people that don't know, is a type of cheese that they put flies in. The flies lay larva into the cheese. From there, it's able to ferment. It's illegal in most countries. And honestly, if I was drunk enough, I could see myself eating nacho Cheerios, if I'm being completely honest. So, Kasu marzu with fly larva that makes it ferment. Oh my God. God, I, I thought it was pound cake. I thought it was like a scone at first. That is disgusting that it's fucking cheese. We gotta go Kazu Marzu. Holy fuck. Monster mashed potatoes or fried tarantula? Oh, it's so it's monster energy drink mashed potatoes or fried tarantula. Hmm. Both of these aesthetically kind of work. The tarantula one is way more chaotic. At least that's what I thought at first. But now monster mashed potatoes, it makes me think of, remember when Heinz ketchup had like green and purple ketchup and it made every plate ever look fucking disgusting. Especially, I think that's brown gravy in a little pool in the center of that. That would be, that would be chaotic. Mentally though, I'm putting myself in like a fear factor situation. I feel like I could eat a spider. I feel like I could, especially if it's fried. If it did, if it just said regular tarantula, well one, I'd be like, that doesn't make sense for it to be on here. But I feel like anything deep fried is, I mean, it's, it's all right. It probably tastes like chicken. That's what, that's like the thing with everything. I feel like I could crunch into it. I honestly feel like the monster mashed potatoes with that brown gravy. The brown gravy is the part sending me over there, which is funny because I would eat a fried tarantula, but the brown gravy gravy is making me gag with these probably damp potatoes that have it's just blended together with monster that just seems like a more chaotic eye on them i, I gotta go ma ma monster mashed potatoes monster mashed potatoes all day dude that is fucked chappy lines and energy toast i don't know what the fuck that is let's read in this they are grasshoppers on the genus cephanerium okay they're magical i guess often they are seasoned with garlic lime juice chilies and or salt mm, damn that sounds good honestly dude i don't know i was about to get my Sounds fucking good, are you kidding me? Garlic, lime juice, and chilies, and salt? Mmm, ah, damn. If you were telling me, if you had a blindfold on it, it was just a paper bag and you just popped them in, you probably wouldn't even, that, I bet it would be delicious. Would I get sick? Probably. But it, I mean, it sounds kind of tasty. Energy toast, I don't know what the fuck that is. Anyone else make energy toast when in a rush? What the fuck does that mean? Is it just monster energy toast with jam? I feel like that'd probably be better than, I'm bring, I, I guess I'll go with the grasshopper one just because that one doesn't feel too crazy. I'll do the grasshopper one chappy lines. I know I said I'd eat it, but 
The, it, the toast one, I was like, eh, you know, whatever. Vegan blue cheese, which looks <laughs> disgusting, unfortunately gets a buy. It gets, it gets to win. Apparently this is, or this is like the NCAA and we have buys for some reason, but here we go. Round two, baby. All right, we're back to the little virgin boy piss eggs with chicken feet meatballs. Could I eat a deviled egg used with Asian boy urine? The picture is just so foul, dude. God, <laughs> Gross. That literally looks like a jalapeno with cheese. Look how dirty. What, is this like a street? What kind of fucking AI generated picture is this behind him too? It's so orange and evil. It should be pure white because of, you know, it's an egg, but it has been tainted over time with fucking urine. I like how they're like, it smells strongly of urine, but tastes pretty good, honestly. I physically don't know if I could actually be in the same room as the chicken feet meatballs. That is so disgusting to me. I can't believe I'm, on, I'm about to say that I would eat <laughs> a little baby boy Asian bits. I got I got to give the chicken meatballs again. The picture is just so bad. Why does it has a vein? The the ground be all of the ground beef has veins, dude. It's disgusting. Oh my god. Oh god. I oh my fucking word. Whatever. That's the winner, dude. Holy shit. The Mountain Dew deviled eggs versus the Casu Marzu, which is basically the fly cheese. Already on this one, the Mountain Dew compared I I see Casu Marzu and it makes me want to fucking gag Mountain Dew deviled eggs. Honestly, I've kind of come around to them. I'd actually be curious to try it. Look at the little, it has the nice cream on top with the paprika. Why the fuck not? Kazu Marzu, you are the winner for sure. Monster mashed potatoes versus chappy lines. <sighs> Every time I come across the monster mashed potatoes, it's just the brown gravy that's getting me. The brown gravy mixed with soggy monster filled wet potatoes. Like, I don't know if you've ever looked at like a plate of just like wet mashed potatoes. Like if you're washing dishes, it's disgusting. It makes me want to fucking hurl. I'm still behind the idea that the, the chappy lines are, hopefully I'm saying that right. Whatever, the grasshoppers. You put those in a blind bag, the garlic, the lime and everything, a little bit of salt. Fuck, I bet that shit's tasty as fuck. I got to go monster mashed potatoes. The vegan blue cheese, once again, is a winner here with another buy. Vegan, once again, though, it would be very hard for me to uh, to not pick that. That thing looks fucking disgusting. All right, third round. I mean, every time, every time I open this picture of the chicken feet meatballs, I seriously, I wish a train would just fucking hit me. This is, it's just so disgusting, dude. God. The worst part is like, it looks like they got, all of them got in fist fights. They all have bruised knuckles and shit. It's like they couldn't possibly look more like alive. There's, it, it's, it, ugh, God, it's just fucking horrible. And the thing about the Kazu Marzu is like, I don't know, that looks pretty disgusting too. But it's more, it's more so the idea. I wonder if I would really even notice the taste when it was done. It's a texture thing for me too. Like I can tell it's gonna be very dry, but I feel like maybe with like a glass of red wine or something, I'm not even a red wine guy, but maybe it would hide the scent of it. Maybe it would be something that's like, it, it seems disgusting, it sounds disgusting, but really it tastes fine. It's gotta be chicken feet meatballs, dude. I can't believe it. I would rather eat cheese that has been fermenting because of literal fly larva. Flies fucking and reproducing and doing all that kind of, well, I guess not fucking, but you know, laying eggs, chicken feet meatballs. I hate you. And then this round here, vegan blue cheese comes up against monster mashed potatoes. Oddly similar textures. The vegan blue cheese just looks abhorrent. Like this is the first time the brown gravy has ever looked kind of appealing next to this thing. The vegan blue cheese looks like something that you would find in the ocean that has never existed, like has never been seen before. And the researchers would bring it up and be like, what is that thing? Look at all the mold. That is so disgusting, dude. That is so gross. That is so fucked. This is all mold. All of this, all the fuzzy stuff. And you're supposed to fucking dip some Triscuits in this? I don't know, man. It doesn't help, too, that in the monster mashed potatoes, they put, like, Italian herbs over the top of the brown gravy, which essentially just looks like chocolate pudding. I'd ha I would probably stomach the mashed potatoes over the, the vegan blue cheese. That is fucking disgusting. We got we to go vegan blue cheese. The final round for appetizers. Here, here it goes. I'm... 
Our finalists are chicken feet meatballs and vegan blue cheese. Man, this is actually very difficult for me. The, the meatballs, honestly, is one of the most abhorrently evil things I've ever seen in my life. But the vegan blue cheese, once again, it feels like it's alive. Like, the amount of fungus and mold on it. I wonder if there is a world where the Triscuits would make a difference. You, 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 you dip it in and it, like, maybe masks itself. It's kind of, that's the problem with cheese, is cheese can look really bad, but then you bite into it. And then it's like, you know, it's stinky and stuff, but maybe it tastes kind of good. Versus I don't know anything on God's green earth that could go with chicken feet meatballs that would make it. Because it's not like you can just dip it in ketchup. I think anything else would just add to its chaos and be absolutely fucking disgusting. I think just tried and true, dude, honestly, I think the winner of this tournament has to be chicken feet meatballs. Chicken feet meatballs is our winner for appetizers. But you know, at least now we get to see what is gonna go with our drinks, which our drinks start off with a mac and cheese shot. That's kind of rad. And Tik Tong's Tik Tong Soul. These fucking Asians, dude. Do some crazy. If this is piss again, I'm gonna be absolutely fucking pissed. <laughs> Bye bing! What is it? It's a fun mixture of water and the poop of I, 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 I can't do this, dude. <laughs> Teet Tong Soul is a mixture of water and the poop of a human child. Ages range from four to seven. That has been fermented. It is fermented child poop. Korean child poop. Traditional Korean medicine that has 9% alcohol content. After the poo has refrigerated for three to four days, it is mixed with water and divided into smaller pieces and fermented overnight. That is, the vat begins to smell incredibly strong of feces. Getting worse as the fermentation continues. The mixture is then poured through a sieve and mixed with 70% non-glutinous rice. 30% of the glutinous rice and yeast. It sits for seven days to ferment and wrapped in a blanket to maintain a temperature of 30 to 37 degrees Celsius. Fun fact, if not fermented enough, it is dangerous to drink. Is it? That's weird. But when perfectly ripe, the alcohol drink is claimed to uh, cure pain, broken bones, bruises, inflammation, and even epilepsy. God damn. The taste is a bit sour and similar to rice wine. It has a faint poo smell and can leave the smell of, it can leave the smell of your breath. Your breath smells like shit. Yeah, dude, I was just trying to cure my epilepsy with tongue soul. Tongue tongue soul. Mac and cheese shot. Why the fuck would I? Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would absolutely, I would do that today. Absolutely. Two tongue soul, the fucking invincible shit like elixir has to be the fucking the winner here. Next one up is Gomutra, which is just it's cow urine. Okay. And baby mouse wine. Oh my God, are those all just baby dead mice that they just, I'm guessing, ferment? Cow urine is used as medicine in some places of India, Myanmar, and Nigeria, while uh, cow urine and cow dung has benefits of uh, fertilizer. The proponents claims about its uh, curing diseases and cancer have no scientific backing. Well, of course not, it's, you know, it's a big religious thing amongst Indian cultures and stuff like that. So I can see, you know, kind of looks kind of tasty here. It looks like orange juice, if I'm being honest. I don't know if that's just all the boxes, but also at the same time, the, the, the labeling for that thing, pretty fire. The baby mouse wine, on the other hand, baby mice drowned in rice wine. At least a dozen baby mice are drowned in rice wine. The wine must mature for at least a year before drinking. This is more of a health tonic than a drink for a casual night out with the boys. It could supposedly help with asthma and liver disease. What does it taste like? Mouse wine has notes of gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> it has notes of gasoline with an aftertaste of rotting animals the smell is described as incredibly putrid baby mouse wine has fans in south china and ancient korea fun fact the mice must be blind and hairless parts of baby mouse skin often float around in the wine so a veteran move would be to sift the liquid before consuming that would be a veteran move um once again it feels like a no-brainer i would definitely just sip on stuff like if i had a couple indian friends who were like no dude for real try it i'd be like why not dude i don't give a shit Baby mouse wine, to see that, to have to sit there and look at a bottle ferment for a year with a bunch of baby blind mouses in there? Come on, man. Baby mouse wine wins. I don't want to sound controversial here, but the Asian countries need to get a fucking grip on poo, pee pee, and like dead animals and shit. Snake wine. Oh God. And frog juice. <laughs> Snake wine, which I'm guessing is they kill a snake and they fucking ferment it for probably a fucking year. Fun fact for me, I, snakes are my least favorite thing ever, ever. Like having this, I would cry. 
seeing this in my room. Frog juice, that looks delicious. Like, even I don't even give a shit if they're blending frogs and mixing it with mocha frappuccinos. I got, I'm gonna have to go with the snake wine. I know this, this is a quick one, but snake wine over anything, honestly. Snake wine, it's gonna be very hard for me not to fucking recoil in fear for that. Bavergal? Bavergal. Bavergal is from Sweden, not from Asia, so we're, we're, it's probably not poo. What is it? Schnapps from the infused anal glands of a beaver. Oh, that's the anal glands, but it's not the poo. It's not the poo, so we're, it's almost there. Description, the anal gland of the beaver is infused in the alcohol for several weeks. The result is a bitter schnapps with an overpowering taste of pine trees, tar, leather, and urine. Hmm. Fun fact, in the 1800s, these glands could cost two months salary, causing Swedish beavers to be hunted to extinction. God damn. The yellowish fluid produced by beavers' anal glands has been used in perfumes to make a natural vanilla substitute. Dare I say I wouldn't mind trying the beaver gland. Stag semen beer. Okay, well, I don't have to be a scientist to figure out what's going on there. Do I either want to eat the asshole of a beaver or drink uh, stag cum? Basically fermented stag cum. Honestly, the, the beaver thing, I, I I feel like it wouldn't be that bad. Like if, if you went up to it and you were like, oh, I, I wouldn't, you didn't know that was like a beaver gland. It feels like it could be passable versus I feel like stag cum would just be very thick and even in a beer, you're like, oh my God, is this a milkshake? They're like, no, it's beer. Oh, well, what flavor is this? This feels, I don't know, it tastes kind of weird, huh? Yeah, it's stag cum, actually. I have to give them points and I don't like it for the the uh, the label of this beer, which is half stag and half sperm cell, <laughs> which I, it does have chocolate notes, coffee and chocolate notes. I'm not a big mocha guy either though. I, I think I'd have to give it to the stag cum. There we go. Amaranth vagina beer or placenta 10,000. Amaranth is using, she's doing like the yeasty flavor of her vagina in a beer. I think it's an unbelievable marketing strategy. Good for you. Hope you make even more millions of dollars off that. I personally probably won't be trying it, but let's see what placenta 10,000 is. Placenta 10,000 drink comes from Nihon so uh, Sofuken and is a popular new drink in Japan. Uh-oh. It's supposed to taste like tender peaches. Oh, well, what is that? What is that it? It's just, but it's just placenta. Oh, that's a real human placenta in there. So the 10,000 is 10,000 milligrams of the placenta. 10,000 milligrams of placenta is just in these like weird Repo Man blood bags. It's supposed to taste like tender peaches? God, it kind of sounds good. <laughs> Damn, what? Why am I kind of wanting to drink placenta? Why am I gagging more over amaranth vaginal yeast than I am over drinking the placenta? Yo, all this shit's got me confused, dog. Sorry, Amaranth, but you're 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 moving up on the list. And last from these rounds is three penis liquor or sour toe cocktail. I don't even know if we can show that. That is disgusting. The sour toe shot is a shot of whiskey garnished with a human toe, a literal human toe. Where did where do they get the toes, Nick? Uh, they're that's a good question, but they are mummified, so maybe they just did. they're mummified. So people are grave robbing and doing shots with them. That's a, is that that's probably Ireland, right? Do we have anything for three penis liquor? Chinese alcohol contains three kinds of animal penises. I would, I mean, come on now. Honestly, a mummified toe is better than just some like extract of like dog penis, deer penis, and seal penis. That's a pretty, honestly, I feel like I would get superpowers. Part of me, part of me honestly wouldn't mind, not a full shot, but I kind of want to do half a shot of three penis liquor. Also, the branding is kind of fire too. Like, I feel like if you showed up and you're just like, I don't know, dude, are you a pussy? You want to fucking drink this or not? The sour toe cocktail that would that would be a bit harder of a pill to swallow, if I'm being completely honest. Also, it would be impossible for the toe not to touch your mouth. A rule for it is you can drink it how at however speed, but the toe absolutely has to touch your lips. And for that reason alone, I think it makes itself a pretty beautifully cursed and fucking horrible drink. So I'm gonna move it forward. All right, round two for drinks. Oh God, this is a hard one, dude. Titong Sul or baby mouse wine? Korea, how dare you? So basically fermented child poop or baby mouse wine. I think in any situation, if you show up and say that like this is made from the excrement of a child, people would much rather, I feel like there'd be, I would say nine out of 10 people would be like, just give me the baby mouse wine. So I think for that reason too, and also the whole thing is that when you drink it, your breath smells like literal shit. I think that you gotta go with Titong Soul. Snake wine versus stag semen beer. Honestly, once again, the snake is absolutely fucking me up. I, I gotta go snake. The stag semen beer, I could see it being like a party trick thing, but the snake wine for me, just showing up with a giant fucking snake and I just can't. I don't think I can. 
Me personally, I can't. I people might disagree, but snake wine's got to push forward for me. Amaranth's uh, vaginal beer or sour toe cocktail. I mean, honestly, the toe still. And this is the reason why is because it's, if it was made of her actual vaginal yeast, that might push it forward, but it's just supposed to be, oh wait, no, to brew a new flavor using her vaginal yeast. Oh, so it is using her vaginal yeast. Mm, makes it a bit more difficult. How do you get her vaginal yeast? So she just swabs her pussy up and throws it into a vat of beer. The idea of it is like just abhorrently disgusting to me. The sour toe cocktail now, I mean, honestly, it seems kind of, I hate to say it, but it seems kind of cool if you did it, right? I just don't know if I'm down putting human yeast inside me, because at least the sour coke, well, I mean, I don't, it's a, it is a dead toe when you're drinking the liquid, but only putting on your lips. This is hard, man. The problem too is I feel like I'm in a catch 22 where if I, if I don't choose amaranth, then I hate women. And then if I choose the other thing, I'm an incel or whatever. It's a losing battle. I'm overthinking it. I would go sour toe cocktail still as pushing forward because obviously it's like a gimmick. It's not really anything crazy. Sour toe cocktail, you win. All right, last second to last round. Titong Solon Snake Wine. Objectively, my fear of snakes can't push us forward through the baby poop drink. Baby poop drink has to win. It just has to. So our finals are Titong Sol and Sour Toe Cocktail. I feel like I've already kind of answered this. I feel like my answer to this has to be Titong Sol because at least the Sour Toe Cocktail, I could see myself doing that once. It would be very, very hard to convince me to be like, hey, you should try this uh, Korean baby poop deal. Your breath will smell like shit afterwards. That just feels fucking terrible. And also showing up to the holiday party with some Titong Soul feels, I mean, you're gonna like, family members aren't gonna talk to you after that, all right? I think Titong Soul's the winner, dude. Titong Soul's the winner. It's our entree. I mean, we have to think that this is the centerpiece of our meal, so people, lock it the fuck in! We gotta go! First one up is frog shishimi and warthog anus, which honestly, the warthog anus thing is some beautiful art. The frog shishimi just looks very sad. Frog shishimi is a large frog is stabbed skin, gutted, and served up on an ice plate with a lemon slice with soy sauce. So literally, it's frog sushi, and we just eat frog guts. I don't know how I feel about that. The frogs are very cute. That makes me sad. A warthog anus is to kill and gut the warthog and pull out the anus with the last one foot of intestines attached. Squeeze out the feces, but don't wash the anus or intestine, make a fire, and throw the juicy anus directly into it. Ignore the dirt and ashes that will cover the anus. Be sure not to cook it too long. Cut it into the uh, it, it, into bite-sized pieces and serve immediately. Both of these are bad. I mean, the frog sashimi thing, I could probably see myself with soy sauce, baby enjoying. I could also see myself, I mean, the warthog anus thing is just don't clean the shit, so you're like probably gonna bite into some like pooey warthog anus. I'd probably go warthog anus on this one. It's my immediate gut reaction. Well, I don't know. I mean, showing up to the club with frog shishimi, I feel like it's gonna bring the vibe down. Is that a positive for our cursed meal? You're saying you'd rather eat warthog anus? I probably would rather eat warthog anus, maybe. Then look at the sad frog. I guess I'd go frog shishimi because I'm a sweetheart. Frog shishimi. Black pudding or... Shirako. Honestly, none of these seem too bad, so let's look into them. Shirako is... While this white paste may look like mayonnaise, it's actually fish semen. Okay. Milt is sometimes harvested by hand, but the easiest way to harvest is to simply retrieve the mill from the genitals of a dead fish. So those are just large pieces of fish semen put together. Why do they still kind of look aesthetically pleasing? I also don't look that, like that you have to go into a dead fish's genitals. So you don't see that in Jiro Dreams of Sushi, do you? Black pudding from UK and Ireland. Oh, God. Blood sausage made of pork or beef blood with pork fat and oats. Considered one of the oldest forms of sausage since blood generally spoils and less prepared. This became the easiest way to ensure it didn't go to waste after animals went to slaughter. Most traditional recipes from the UK involve stirring the fresh blood, adding fat in some form of rusk and seasoning before filling the mixture into a casting and boiling it. The black pudding is a good source of protein. It is low in carbohydrates and high in zinc and iron. It has been described as superfood because the natural, yeah. I mean, honestly, the black pudding thing, while it looks gross, I bet it's not bad. I bet it's just sausage. It looks disgusting, but compared to dead fish cum, and like that looks aesthetically pleasing too, but the thing is, I think it's too aesthetically pleasing, and I think that it would be fucking vile. So, Chiraco, you are proceeding forward. Next up, we have jellied moose nose. Oh my God, and Sonic curry. <laughs> Baby, are you okay? You barely touched your Sonic limited edition curry. That jellied moose nose looks fucking insane. Chili's moose nose is similar to European uh, head cheese. Oh. Trapping cuts of moose nose within a gelatinized broth. That is disgusting. So this is literally just 
like a grinded up moose nose put into a gelatin, like a broth gelatin and frozen for it to be basically a giant jello, mo like moose nose gut jello. That is, that is fucked. That is actually fucked. The fur must be removed prior to cooking, either by being singed off with an open fire, peeled off after the nose has been boiled, or simply skinning the nose. Chefs then slice the nose and simmer it with onions, garlic, and an array of other spices, which may include cinnamon, cloves, allspice, or mustard seeds. Meat from other parts of the moose's head, such as the ears and lips, oh my god, may be added to the mix. Once the concoction has cooled down, the cook lays pieces of meat in a loaf pan, douses them with broth, and places the mixture in a refrigerator so the broth can solidify. The resulting jelly is served with a loaf of bread and eaten into slices. That is... Dis that's disgusting. <laughs> Moose ears and lips and just all of the cartilage and shit from a nose. It's fucked. Baby, you can't barely touch your Sonic curry. I'd eat the Sonic curry! Why not? Yeah, it looks fucking disgusting, but whatever, dude. I had chicken tiki masala tonight. Sign me up, bitch. I'm- uh, yeah. Moose nose proceeds forward. Moose nose proceeds forward. Powerade pasta or chocolate ramen dogs? <laughs> Both of these are just getting into poor white trash territories of snacks. The powdery pasta, man, it's just whatever's just died. The idea of this, like, dried ramen with Hershey chocolate bars and hot dogs, I don't think it would be the worst thing in the world, but at the same time, I think it would be, it would be, it would be hard to power through. That would be a weird concoction of things. My white trash nature almost wants to let the- I would probably eat the chocolate ramen dogs before I would eat the Powerade pasta. Powerade pasta, you're moving forward, but I'm gonna let you know you're not gonna be a winner in this competition. Ortolan bunting or Batarmigan shit. The Ortolan bunting, a tiny songbird that summers across Western Europe and winter, winters in Africa. Yeah, I, I hate that you had to, we had to start it off like that because now I feel bad for it. Netted Ortolans are kept in dark cages which tricks them into gorging themselves on grain and figs. Once the small birds have doubled or more in size, they are drowned and simultaneously marinated in brandy. They're then plucked and roasted, which doesn't take long since there is a little meat on their bones. First off, I just want to say that this would be delicious, but that was tragically depressing. That That, that is the only reason that that is, you know, that's even on this list. That is just hor horribly, horribly depressing. Uh, the next one is Partmagin shit or Uramet, which is the intuit name of the birds of bird droppings. So people are just eating bird poop. Okay, it's collected in the winter when it's dry. It's unpleasantly gooey in the summer. <laughs> I hate that. Don't grab it now, son. Wait till the winter. It's going to be unpleasantly gooey right now. It's then cooked with rancid seal oil. Why is it heavy rancid? Why can't it just be regular seal oil? In the old days, the seal uh, seal meat was masticated by one spouse before being spat into the cooking pot. What the fuck does masticate mean? Is she shoving her pussy or something like that? Or she chew it and then spit it in. So she chewed up and spit it, and then so so basically they're, they're doing nothing besides cooking this with seal fat. They're eating shit with seal fat. I mean the parting and shit. I bet you the bird tastes delicious. It's just horribly sad, and I hope the birds can be set free. That it it's so sad. And look like this is the cutest image here. Is their little legs? They're just like think. Yeah, I guess the shit's moving forward, dude. Black chicken. Okay, we're getting racial. Right. And uh, hackarl. 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 Hackarl comes from Iceland. Okay. Well, first off, I want you to know this picture that we have in the document. It's fucking horrifying. It looks like just a psychopath's like murder barn. It's fermented shark meat. Hmm. The Greenland sharks do not have a urinary tract, but rather urinal through their skin, making their flesh toxic. To eat the toxic meat of the Greenland shark, Icelanders let it rot in the ground for several months. It is then hung to dry for another five months. The fermentation process involved in making hackerel breaks down the urine and makes it safe to consume. Hackerel is traditional Icelandic food and is eaten both during special occasions as part of everyday diet. Small cubes of the white rubbery delicacy are served on toothpicks. Hmm. What does it taste like? It has been described as chewing a urine infested mattress. <laughs> What? Why would you? How is that a delicacy? It has been described as chewing a urine infested mattress, but the pungent smell of death and ammonia is worse than the taste. That it doesn't sound good. What the fuck? Anthony Bourdain described this Icelandic food as the single worst, most disgusting and terrible thing he's ever eaten. Why would they do this? Black chicken is a variety of chicken known as silky chicken. These silky chickens have black flesh and bones and white feathers. Silky chickens are frequently seen in China, India. Black chickens are slightly gamier in flavor. Just a literal black, it just tastes like chicken. So whatever, yeah. Definitely the fucking, the white urine mattress that is hackerel. Why would I, why would I do that? Hackerel wins. Black. <laughs> Black hot dog. Okay, a lot of black stuff here, dude. What are you trying to do to me, all right? And kiviak. 
Which looks like I saw the this black hot dog in here before. It looks like they're at an, they're at an IKEA. Black hot dog. IKEA. I called it IKEA. In Malaysia. Uh-oh. A suggestive looking black hot dog. What is it? A suggestive looking black hot dog. Seen it in Ikea. This color scheme choice was uh, hopefully short-lived. Fun fact. Use heavy gloves of yellow mustard for maximum taste. So it's just literally a black hot dog with a weird bun. Whatever. Kiviak looks <laughs> haunting. That is, that is, that looks, is that a fucking house cat that they've broiled? Kiviak is the name of a Greenlandic Inuit dish which consists of up to 500 small seagull birds fermented whole within a sulcher closed freshly disemboweled seal. That's sad. Oils are applied to the skin to prevent infestation by maggots. The pelt containing the whole seagulls is buried underneath a large flat stone seam side up preventing rupturing by the gases that, <laughs> that evolve and contamination. The pelt is dug up up half a year later when fermentation is complete i would eat a black hot dog <laughs> i'm so sad seals are adorable i love seals and this just this picture is just haunting imagine that you kill a seal and you're like i can't wait to eat this in six months <laughs> all right kiviak wins that a lot of these are now coming down to like i'm sad for the animal and then also it's just the inconvenience factor all right last one for this round first round is sun naki which is definitely going to be some kind of cum i bet and fruit bat soup the COVID starter. San Naki, I saw a picture of that. This looks fucking disgusting. Let's look at this. A Korean raw dish, dude, Korea. Get your shit together, dude, for real. A Korean raw dish, or ho in Korean, that features a young live octopus cut into small pieces and served immediately. This is not food to be eaten after screening a finding dory. That's silly. That's very sad. This is just an octopus who's like, what, what's going on? And then people are like, <laughs> have you ever seen all the videos of the Korean women online that just eat like live animals? Fucking horrifying. Poor son. Honestly, the bat soup, that is fucking terrible too. Is that cheese in there? Bat soup, the broth of a fruit bat soup is made by washing a bat and throwing it in boiling water, fur included. After it's been cooked for a while, the bat is taken out of the water and cooked with ginger and coconut milk. Other species as well as vegetable can be added in as well. Many people prefer to skin the bat, remove the fur to get to the meat. However, the real way is to chew the bat, suck out the meat, and to discard the remaining fur. God damn. Okay, so basically we show up to either have people eat alive. But the thing about it, this that doesn't work as an entrees, Nick, with San uh, Natchi, is we have an appetizer to get through. And you have to eat the San Natchi right away. I guess you could just leave it in a cooler or a fucking fish tank or something and be like, all right, go eat the San Natchi. The fruit bat soup is probably just, it's just very unappealing. Like the San uh, Natchi is like, it's unappealing, but at least it's, it doesn't have a cute, I mean, the, the cute little bat's face, it's so sad. Also showing up to the, showing up to like with two, a holiday dinner with a big vat of dead bats. And it's like, don't take off the fur. You're supposed to suck out the meat and discard the fur afterwards. We have to respect the culture. I'd say fruit bat soup. I mean, it's also the COVID starter. That's going to be a hard one to beat, honestly. But that ends our first round. So round two, here we go. Frog sashimi or shirako, which is the pretty cum, basically. Honestly, I, 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 I feel like I've eaten a lot of poo and cum. I'd rather just not have to keep doing that and i feel like at this point i'd probably power through for the frog i'd power through the frog because i would be tired of cum and poop and piss but you know here we are it's turning into a korean thanksgiving immediately <laughs> shirako wins jelly moose nose or power pasta i mean this isn't even a this is a no-brainer jellied moose nose power pasta was like i mean i would welcome that amongst everything now shit or the the piss foam so the shit is cooked with the seal it's just poop it's just poop cooked with spoiled seal like oil or whatever. I would probably just eat the urine fish foam thing, but Anthony Bourdain did say it was the most disgusting thing ever. Whatever happened to that guy? <laughs> These are both rough. I wouldn't want to eat any of them. Once again, it's just like there's so much poop. At the same time, though, it's like people have said this is the worst thing ever. What's crazy, too, is that they, it, well, they say it's a delicacy, but they say that like, you spend so much time and it still tastes like that and you continue to eat it. I'd probably power through to the hack roll. Yeah, the shit wins. So kiviok or fruit bat soup. The kiviok image is honestly so, it's so haunting. They're both cute animals and bringing it up. I mean, I feel like the, ki the kiviok wins, but the fruit bat soup of that being like a COVID starter thing, I don't know. I would probably go kiviok. It's just so sad. It's also just thinking about seeing that, seeing this exact image. I'm picturing myself at my own dinner table having this and it just looks uh, it, it's disgusting. I gotta go Kibiak. Which ends, I mean, we're in the uh, quarterfinals? No. What's, what's, what's before the finals? Uh, quarterfinals. All right. Quarterfinals. Oh, yeah, because four. Semifinals. Semifinals. 
There you go. Shiraco or Jellied Moose Nose. I mean, aesthetically, I would probably go Shiraco. The chipping away at that Jellied Moose Nose looks, uh, it looks crazy. And it's not even just moose cartilage, too. It's like their lips, their ears, like their face, their entire face. And then it's put into a broth to be turned into a fucking jelly. And you're supposed to eat it with white bread. Are you fucking kidding me? I probably would go jelly moose nose. I think I, I would power through the cum taste for sure. I'd be like, give me some chopsticks, dude. I'm going to town. <sighs> Basically seal shit or seals with seagulls. <laughs> The problem is that they're both seal dishes, and I love seals very much. This is very, I'm very upset with this. Now I'm coming down to the thing, you know how before I was saying, do I have the big pot of bat soup? There's no big container of shit. Like if I have a giant container of shit, it's gonna be a lot more disappointing than at least having like a full thing of meat from the kiviok. So I'm almost thinking that the somewhat muddy shit with rancid seal oil would probably be a more fucked, terrible meal option. But also just seeing the Kiviok picture, I just don't know. Seeing that image is just, it is intense. This is just such an intense image. I'm gonna have to go just because I don't wanna show anymore, I'm gonna go to the shit. Okay. The finals are Jellied Moose Nose and the Part McGinn Shit, which is just the seal, like shit mixed with seals. Honestly, for the entree thing, I'm gonna have to go Jellied Moose Nose. Jellied Moose Nose wins. All right, that, that's it. We we made the most horrid cursed meal. Well, let's let's relook at this. When we start the day, let me sit you down at our beautiful holiday dinner. Please, won't you have a seat? Here, can I pour you a, a nice glass of Tottengol? As you sit there, you smell the nice aromas of shit and Korean boys fill the air. Ah, as you take a shit as well, you notice that your own breath smells like shit. So you won't be able to escape that madness. But don't you worry. I just sat down our beautiful, beautiful appetizer. You gaze in glory as you see chicken feet and meatballs get set down in front of you. You reminisce by how they look like a black man's testicle and how you, you can really contemplate on better times knowing that this is a true delicacy. Ah, and yes, you take another sip from your Tootengall or whatever the fuck it's called. Toot and soul. The, the, the taste of shit reforms in your mouth. Your, your belly's getting full, but you don't want to get too full because finally the entree comes out. Oh my God, jellied moose nose. Oh, it sits down and it gives a nice little jiggle. And you really know that as you cut into it and you plop it onto maybe two pieces of Wonder Bread, that this is what the holiday seasons are all about. Getting together with family, eating a bunch of terrible, terrible shit, and being able to reminisce over better and simpler times. Thank you so much for watching. If any of you decide to make these meals, please send me a picture, even if it's just one of the meals. If it's also, first off, if one of you guys have Toot Tong Soul, Toot and Song, Toot Tong Soul. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be like, where'd you get, where'd, who's the kid? First question. The chicken feet meatballs, I'll be like, sure, that's fucking weird. And same with the jelly, but I'd be like, where'd, how'd you get the kid in the poopy? All right, that's all I wanna know. Thank you so much for watching the channel. I hope you all have a great holiday season if you're celebrating. If not, I don't know, go to McDonald's or something like that. Take care, y'all. I'll see you next time.